Jim Carter has been teaching physics for over 30 years at Saugus High School in Saugus, Massachusetts, a suburb of Boston. Ah, uh, good morning. We've got 12 volts and resistance is 4 ohms. You're performing every time the kids come into the classroom in a very real sense. Sometimes you're a salesman, sometimes you're a clown, sometimes you're a raving lunatic. Sometimes they don't know what to make of you, all right, and you have to be kind of flexible. One of the things about it is that when the bell rings and they're all in the classroom, uh, you know, it's, it's showtime. Uh, I have a feeling this isn't going to last too long, all right, so plug it in. Oh, Ooh. hey. Hey. I told you <laughs> Let's do that again. What are your views, if you were to sort of speak philosophically about, about your views on teaching and... Jim Carter is working with physics teacher and science educator Jim Minstrel to reflect on his teaching practice. The roles of the teacher, the roles of the learner. Uh, you have to basically believe in what, in what you're doing. You have to believe that what you're doing is, is worth your time, their time, everybody's time. Uh, that, what, that, that you're getting... Uh, you, you're, you're giving them the opportunity to, to learn something that's going to be uh, potentially significant. They might not ever use it, that, that's true, but if you're, you're dealing kind of in, uh, in opportunities. You know, this is an opportunity to uh, find out something about this, uh, and the, this in this case happens to be physics. Did it burn? Uh, no. Physics teachers are, are like lone rangers in the sense that in most schools is maybe one or sometimes maybe two, but a lot of times just one. So you, you tend to work in isolation an awful lot. Did you see it there? You have I didn't see very it few people right. that you can talk to about what you're doing and how you're doing it. Can you see the residue that's on here? It's part of the filament. Well, the filament, isn't, the filament is not between these two posts anymore. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that, uh, that is the filament. That is the filament. Well, that's what's, <laughs> la that's what's left of it, all right? They all laced up his tungsten. Well, no, it's not the metal. A lot of times you like to think that what you're doing uh, really, you know, really got across. And, uh, a good deal of the time it does, I think, you know, uh, but once in a while, you know, perhaps more than you'd like to think, uh, uh, they miss crucial areas, so they, they, there's some things that they didn't quite get as, as well as you'd like to think that they got them. And uh, what Edison came up with was... To demonstrate why explanations sometimes fail, Mr. Carter agreed to let us videotape his lesson. Jennifer is one of Mr. Carter's best students. Jennifer's uh, a very, very nice kid, a good student. She would respond and give me that kind of feedback that I do look for. She's pretty self-assured, uh, got a good mind, and uh, in the classroom, she was pretty much of an asset. She did quite well. Let's see how well she learns. Can you see a little piece of copper wire there? Mr. Carter's goal was to explain that to make the bulb light, electricity has to flow through the filament in a cycle in through the base of the bulb and out the side. You have inside the light bulb basically enough things to make a complete electrical circuit. If you've got the electricity going in, let's say the, where the threaded base is, it'll go in through that wire that we looked at, up through the filament, through the filament doing its trick, and out the base. And that's what you know electrical circuits are. They're loops, all right? There's some wire. I may not have given you enough. I'm going to give you four pieces of wire, at least to start with. Then I'm going to madly start cutting some other pieces of wire. See if you can come up with a way to get all three of them on at once. Uh, Jennifer followed up what she was taught with hands-on activities designed to reinforce the concept. No. Yeah. Jim Carter spent almost a month covering advanced topics in electricity in addition to batteries and bulbs. Yeah. Just remember, it's got to make a circuit. It's got to make a complete loop. We interviewed Jennifer one month after the lesson. Mr. Carter watched tapes of the interview with Jim Minstrel. What do you think? Uh, uh, if you had, like, a battery and you wanted to hook up the battery to make the light bulb light up, what might you do? You just need some, you'd need wire mm -hmm. connected to the battery and to the light bulb. Could, could you draw for me how you, would, how you would do it? Jennifer is concerned that without the equipment used in class, the bulb can't light. You can just show me how you... How can, you I, can I use something to plug the screw the light bulb into? <laughs> why just the light bulb itself. Like the thing yeah. you use in class? Like this thing here? Yeah. Well, why would you need this part? Um, 
I don't know. You can't. <laughs> it just won't work. <laughs> okay, and now here you're, you started twisting there. And why did you do that? Just to keep the wires in contact with each other. Okay. Can we try to light up the bulb and see? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll hold it for you. you can. Jennifer so didn't right, light the work. bulb. No. It didn't work. Okay. But even more surprising was that the mistakes she made were exactly the same ones she made uh, before the lesson. And then they'd be both connected to the bottom of the light bulb. What happens if that wire gets too hot? Jim Carter's careful explanations had done nothing to change her mind. They'll give you back what you gave them, but they can't take it another step beyond necessarily because they really didn't understand and grasp and internalize the concept that you were, you thought you, that, that you had presented in such a clear way. Now, I, I'd like you to take a look at it and trace those wires down yourself and examine it carefully. Yeah, it might be a little sharp on the edges here. Oh, I was wrong. Oh, wait a minute. Well, uh, one of them is connected to the side, mm -hmm. to the metal on the outside mm -hmm. here. Okay. Do you think that's important that one goes out to the side, or do you think? Yeah. It's... Jennifer finally realizes why her previous ideas are wrong, and creates a new drawing that is 100% correct. And one of them to the side. So. Well, you said it wouldn't work last time. What do you think now? I still don't think it'll work, but... Mm -hmm. Wait, could you draw in what you think you need to add to this to make the light bulb light? The little... just a little case. For some reason, Jennifer still doesn't believe her drawing is correct and insists the bulb can't light without the socket. I'd like to try out the drawing that you did. Mm -hmm. I'll hold the light bulb, I'll hold the battery, and you can tell me what to do. All right. Hook one piece up to each end of the battery. Mm -hmm. But before we attach it, I want to know whether you think this is going to work or not. No. It's not? No. Yeah. And, and why do you think it's not going to work? Um, because I think you need the, the, whoops, I think you need the pieces to carry the charge. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think it'll work just connecting mm -hmm. the wires to the light bulb. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it did work, if it did work, <laughs> then what would you think? I fall off my chair. <laughs> okay, all right, let's, let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it worked. <laughs> I don't know, I guess you don't need the little pieces. That's probably just to hold it in. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you were the physics teacher and you were going to teach the lesson on electricity. Uh huh. What would you have done with your students? I'd start with the inside of the light bulb and work my way out. Mm -hmm. So I'd explain everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did I explain this to you? No. So how did you learn it? I just figured it out. I just looked at it. And after you look at it, you can see that what happens. Mm -hmm. It's kind of obvious if you just look at it. Uh, she knew she knew how she knew how to make it work if she had the right uh, the right materials but if the right materials weren't there then uh, th then there was the problem so we were not we weren't getting to the heart of the issue obviously uh, on that um, hmm yeah they, they're gonna ha that that would definitely they're gonna do some different things this they're year gonna do some definitely yeah. different things this year yeah yeah uh, you just do it for so many years that, that some of these extremely basic things are just, you know, you forget just uh, that that kind of uh, problem can really get in there. Uh -huh. You know, it's just, uh, you're, you're, you're too familiar with it, I think is part of what it is, maybe. You mean as a teacher? As a teacher, yeah. You're just, you're just too familiar with the concept. I mean, it's just, it's so blatantly obvious after all these years uh -huh. that uh, you just don't realize sometimes that uh, how, how, less than obvious it can be.